Okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at probability from a table. So grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, make some notes, and we're going to kick start with this question. Now, there's a couple of different types of questions we can have from probability from a table. We're going to have a look at some relative frequency, and we're going to have a look at some reverse fractions or reverse percentages, however we look at them. Okay, so we're going to start with this question here, and it says, in a bag there are only red, blue, and white counters, and a counter is taken at random from the bag, and the table shows the probability of each colour. Obviously, though, we can see we are missing a colour, we're missing the probability of white just here, and we'll have a look at that in just a sec. It then says James is going to take a counter, replace it and take another, and he does this 50 times. Estimate how many times he'll take a white counter. Now obviously we don't know the probability of white, but we can actually work that out. Now when I look at these probabilities in a table, I like to think of these decimals here as percentages in disguise. So this one here, 0 0.5, is a uh, 50%, okay, and we can look at that as a percentage instead of a decimal. Blue we've got there is 0 0.3, and that's 33%, uh, sorry, 30%, there we go, and that is our second percentage. Now, all of these probabilities have to add up to 100%. So at the moment, we've got 50% and 30%, and that adds up to a total of 80% at the moment, there we go. So we're missing 20%. So that missing 20% is our decimal for white, okay? And obviously we're writing this as decimals, so if we want to have a look at it in just in terms of the decimals, we could think of it as 0 0.5, add 0 0.3, that gives us 0 0.8. If we look at it in terms of the decimals, there we go. So to make that equal one, we are missing out on 0 0.2. So the probability of white is 0 0.2, or logically, if we think about it, that's 20%. Now the reason I think about it in terms of a percentage is because it's going to help us further down the line with some of these questions and it's going to help us with this second part of this question. So it says he takes a white counter 50 times. So if he takes a counter, the white counter 50 times, we would expect him to take a white 20% uh, of the time. Sorry, he doesn't take a white counter 50 times, but if he takes a counter 50 times, we would expect it to be white 20% of the time. So really all this question is asking us is to work out 20% of 50. Okay, so all we've got to do is pick out that little percentage question. So really we just need to find 20% of 50 and we can do that quite nice and easily. Always find 10% to start with, so 10% of 50 equals 5 and 20% is double that, so 20% is going to equal 10 times. There we go, and there's our final answer, 10. Now just another note on this, it does say uh, that word estimate. Now normally the word estimate does mean to round, doesn't it? It means to round to one significant figure and make a little bit of a guesswork. Now in this scenario here, the word estimate is just because we are using the probabilities in order to do so. Okay, it's like when we flip a coin, it's a 50-50 chance that we'll get a head or a tail, but if we flip it twice, we're not necessarily going to actually get a head and a tail. We could get two tails, okay? So that, that's what the word estimate estimate means in this scenario, it just means the fact that we are using the probability in order to make our best guess on how many uh, or counters or whatever the question's about we're actually going to get. So there we go, that's this question uh, sorted. Find the missing decimal in the table, obviously you can think about that in terms of a percentage or in terms of a decimal. They've all got to add up to 1 or they've got to add up to 100% depending on which way you want to look at it. And then you just need to have a look at the second part of the question, have a think about what percentage of what it's actually asking. So in this circumstance here it said 50 times. And for the amount of white counters, we identified that the white counters was 20% or 0 0.2, and therefore we could get 20% uh, of 50 there. Now if you have a calculator, there is a nice quick way of doing this. I don't think it necessarily helps for the progression of this topic, but there is a quick way of doing this as well. You could just do 50 uh, and multiply it by 0 0.2. And that just on your calculator basically is just the calculator way of saying work out 20%, okay? So it is the same process, uh, but you'll get the same answer there. So you can just do a little bit of a shortcut if you want to take a nice quick approach using a calculator. But there we go, that's the end of that one, and here's a couple for you to have a go at. Okay, so here's your two questions. Have a read of them nice and carefully, but pause the video there, have a go, and we'll go over the answer in a sec. Okay, so this first one on the left. It says here that, and we've got all this story about all these different coloured counters, but it says uh, Amy is going to spin the spinner 60 times, work out an estimate for the number of times the spinner will land on green. So we need to find out that missing percentage or that missing decimal to start with, and at the moment if we add them up we've got 30% plus 25 plus 15, and if we add them all together that adds up to, let's have a think, 55, 60, 70. So at the moment these all add up to 0 0.7, or 70%. So our missing decimal there is 0 0.3, okay, or 30%. So it says work out how many times it's going to land on green. Well, as green is 30%, we would expect it to land on green 30% of the time. So we need to work out 30% of 60. There you go. 
So 10% of 60 equals 6. There we are, so 10% equals 6. So 30% is going to equal 3 lots of that, 18. So we would expect it to land on that 18 times. There we are, and there's our first answer. On to the next one. We've got to find out the missing decimal again. So at the moment, let's have a look. We've got the total here is 0. Doesn't look like a very good 0. 0 0.88. There we go, or 88% so far. So we are missing 12% or 0 0.12. There we go. Now it says in the question, uh, Andrew is gonna take a pen, replace it and take another. He does this 200 times. Estimate how many times he will take a blue pen. So watch out, it wasn't actually asking us about green here. He was actually asking us about blue. So actually we didn't even need to find the missing decimal there, but it is likely in a question, it would be asking you to find that missing part in the table. So obviously here we go, we've got blue is 0 0.24, so that's 24% of the time. So we're gonna find 24% of the 200 times that he does this, so 24% of 200. So obviously if you have a calculator nice and easy, you can just multiply by 0 0.24, but if you don't, and it's important to know these methods, 10% to start with is 20, and we can find 1% as well. 1% is two. And in order to get to 24%, look, we're going to need two of these and four of those, and that'll get us to 24%. So two lots of 20 is 40, four lots of two is eight. And if we add those two together, we get 48 as our final answer. All right, there we go. So 48 times, let's just highlight that to finish that off. And there we go, that is how to use probability from a table and using that uh, for this, what we call relative frequency to find out how many we would expect using that probability. Let's have a look at something slightly different. Okay, so this question says, in a bag there are red, blue, yellow and green counters. A counter is taken at random from the bag and the table shows the probability of getting each coloured counter. So we've got red, blue and yellow and we're missing green. Then it says later in the question, look, it says, uh, there are 45 green counters in the bag. Work out the total number of counters in the bag. So if we have a look here, we just need to figure out what's missing. What's that probability of getting green to start with? Because it's slightly different. It's not saying how many times they're going to pick the counters out or something along those lines. It's actually given us an actual amount of counters allocated to that probability. So at the moment, if we add all of these up, we've got 0 0.3, 0 0.25 and 0 0.15. And they add up to 0 0.7 or 0 0.70. There we are. So we're missing 0 0.3, which again is 30 there we go so 30% of the counters are green and it says down here there are 45 green counters so this is actually telling us that 30% is actually equal to 45 counters there we go so that 30% there is 45 counters and we need to find out the original amount of counters or the total amount of counters in the bag and in order to do that, we need to turn that 30% back into 100%. So this is almost like a reverse percentage because we need to break this down in order to turn it back into 100. We can't just multiply it by two or multiply it by three. It's not gonna get us to 100%. So if we go about breaking this down, always look, how can we get back to that 10%? And to get 30% back to 10%, we would have to divide that by three. And that would tell us that 10% is equal to 15 counters when we divide that by three. There we go, so 10% is 15 counters. And now we're able to turn that back into 100. And from 10% back to 100 is nice and easy because we just need 10 of those. So times it by 10. So that original 100% of the counters is 150. There we go, and there's our final answer. So a slightly different bit of wording there actually allocates the amount of counters to that certain percentage. So it's called a reverse percentage, obviously because it's not given us the 100%, it's given us part of it, and it's looking, us, looking for us to go back or build it back to 100%. Okay, so that's a different sort of approach, a different sort of question, and I'm gonna give you a couple of these to have a go at now. So here they are. Okay, so there's two questions here, so pause the video there, have a go, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Right, okay, so on to the first question. In a bag, there are only red, blue, and white counters. The table shows the probability of getting each colored counter. And then it gives us red is 0 0.5, blue is 0 0.3, and obviously we can work out white there. So we've got 0 0.5 and 0 0.3 at the moment add up to 0 0.8, so we're missing 0 0.2 or 20% for white. So there are 24 white counters in the bag, how many are in, in the bag in total? So that 24 white counters is the 0 0.2, which is 20%, so 20% equals 24, 
There we go. And we don't even need to break that down to 10% because we can turn that straight into 100. So you could have divided it by two and got 12, that's fine. But actually when we've got 20%, look, we can just straight away times that by five. So 20% times five gives us our 100%. And 24 times five will give us 120. There we go. Without a calculator, you might have just preferred to actually break that down. So if we halve that, we get 12, and then it's nice and easy just to add a zero on. But there we go, there's our final answer, 120 counters there. And let's highlight that, there we go. Right, so the next one, it says in a bag, let's have a look, there are only red, blue, and white counters. A counter is taken at random, and it says here's the probability of getting a red counter. It says the probability of getting a blue is the same as the probability of getting a white. So blue is the same as getting a white. And then it tells us about how many blue counters there are, so let's have a look. Now at the moment we've got 0 0.2, so it says that these two are the same, and we've got 0 0.8 or what's and probably a nicer way to look at it is 0 0.80. And it says that the probability for both those is the same. So we can halve that. So half of 80 is 40. So each one is 0 0.40 or 0 0.4. There we go, which is obviously 40%. So the probability of blue is 40%. So it says there are 48 blue counters. So we know that 40% uh, percent is equal to the 48 blue counters. There we go. And we can't take a nice, let's just highlight that, 48 blue counters. We can't just very quickly turn that back into 100 uh, because we can't just multiply it by something. But we could just, uh, there's a couple of approaches we could take. We could uh, divide it down by two, we could get 20% and then make a little combination. Or we could just straight away divide by four and that gives us 10%. There we go, so 10% is equal to 12. There we are. And we can nice and easily turn that back into 100 because we just want to times that by 10. There we go, so we'll get 100% is equal to 120. And there we go, there's our final answer. So we've got the same answer for both, 120 counters in both, uh, and just obviously using that similar approach there. But obviously in that second question, we had the added difficulty of the fact that we were missing two, but obviously it said that the probability of them was the same, so that was quite nice. Once we found out what was missing, we just needed to halve it. But there we go, that is obviously looking at a sort of reverse table where it gives us one of the pieces and just allocating it to the rest of them to find the total there. But let's have a look at something slightly different before we finish. Okay, so in this question it says, in a box there are only red, blue, black and green pens. A pen is taken at random from the box and the table shows the probabilities it will be on red or green. Then it says the probability the pen will be on the word black is three times the probability that the pen will be blue. Okay, so we'll have to have a look at that bit. And then it also says there are 28 green pens in the box, work out the total number of black pens in the box. So there are 28 green pens, work out the total number of black. So we've obviously got the amount of green pens, so we could start to work backwards from there, but we don't know what the percentage or what the probability of getting a black pen is, so we're gonna to have to have a look at that. Now at the moment, we've got this information, it says black is three times the probability that the pen will be blue. So we can think about that in terms of a little ratio. So we've got black to blue, and it says the ratio there, one is three times the other, so it's three to one. So if we have a look at what the probability missing is, well at the moment we've got 0 0.42 and 0 0.14, and the total there, if we add those together, is 0 0.56. So at the moment we've got 0 0.56, there we go. So what is left for these two? Well from, north, or from 56 to 100 is 44, so that is 0 0.44 that we're missing, or 44%. So we've got 44% there that we need to split in the ratio three to one. That's okay for us to do. If we're splitting that in the ratio, let's have a look. We've got four parts in total. So we'll divide that by four and that equals 11% or 0.11. There we go. So it says obviously in our little ratio there that blue is one of those parts. So blue up here is 0.11, one of them, and black is three of them. So three times 0.11, or three times 11 is 33. So it's 0 0.33, and that is our table filled in. Now we can actually go about answering the question because it says there are 28 green pens in the box. Well, we know that green over here is four, 0 0.14, so we know that 14% is equal to 28 pens. And that's not as nice to turn into 10%, but we can divide by 14 and get a value for 1%. So divide by 14, 28 divided by 14, that's nice and easy to do, we get two pens, there we go. 
so 1% is equal to 2 pens. So having a look at our table then, which element here are we looking for? We're looking for the black pens, so black pens is 33, so 33% for the black pens is going to be uh, 33 times 2, which is 66 pens. And there we go. And there's our final answer. Okay. So one pen, uh, sorry, one percent was two pens. So 33 percent, or we times that by two. 33 times two is 66 pens. There we go. And there's our final answer. So quite a lot going on there. We had to figure out what was missing, split it in a ratio, share that ratio out, and then obviously doing some of our reverse percentage there. 14 percent was 28 pens. So one percent was two pens when we divided by 14. And then obviously when we were looking for the 33 percent, we just had to times that by two. Obviously, if 1% was 5 pens, we'd have times it by 5 or so on. Okay, but we're obviously just looking for the 33% there for the black pens. So there we go, there's our uh, question finished, and there's one more for you to have a go at now before we finish this off. Okay, so here's your last question, so pause the video there, have a go, and we'll go with the answer in a sec. Okay, so it says here, and our first key piece of information here, it says the probability that the counter will be green or will be yellow. The probability that the counter is red is twice the probability the counter will be blue. Right, so we've got the probability the counter will be green or yellow, that's in the table there, and it says the probability that the counter is red is twice the probability it will be blue. So red to blue at the moment is 2 to 1. So let's figure out what's missing. Now if we add these up at the moment, we have 0 0.55. So for these two here, what do we have left over? We have 0 0.45, there we go. So we need to share that in the ratio. So at the moment our ratio adds up to three, we've got two to one. So if we divide that by three, 45 divided by three is 0 0.15, there we go. So blue is one of those parts, 0 0.15, and red is two of them, 0 0.30 or 0 0.3. So that's our table filled in. It then says down here there are 21 green counters. So we've got green being 35, so 0.35 is 35%. So 35% equals 21 counters. Right, so that's not very nice. So we could work out 1%, we could divide it by 35. But actually I'm going to apply a non-calculator method here. I'm going to think about dividing that down to something maybe a little bit easier. And then maybe we could divide that by 7 and that will give us 5%. So 5% is going to equal 3 counters. There we go. Now, is 5% going to help us? Because ultimately this question is actually asking for us to work something out. It says work out the number of red counters in the bag. So red up here is 30%, and that's fine because we can turn 5% back into 30% now. Let's have a think. How do we get 5% back to 30%? We would multiply it by 6. So we'll times that by 6. And that will give us our 30% that we're looking for. So 30% is going to equal 3 times 6, 18 counters. There you go. So there's a method that's definitely going to work without a calculator. Let's just highlight that. And have a quick think about how we would do that if we did have a calculator as well. So we could do 21 divided by 35. Let's have a look. Let's just type this in on the calculator. That would give us 1%. And that comes out as three fifths. And then obviously red is 30%, so we can times that by 30. And that as well gives us 18 counters. So we can do that as well nice and easy with a calculator. But obviously I just applied a non-calculator method there as well. But there we go, that is the end of probability from a table. Hopefully you found that useful and helpful. If you did, please like, please comment, please subscribe. And I'll see you for the next one.